Hi and welcome to Themico. In this lesson, we will continue working on the kinematic analysis of a crankshaft mechanism. With the derivation of the components needed for the acceleration analysis, we will finalize this example case. Let's bring back the generalized accelerations equation. Q double dot equals CQ inverse times minus CTT minus CQ times Q dot Q times Q dot minus 2 times CQT times Q dot. The unknown terms are the vector of constraints differentiated twice with respect to time, CTT, the Jacobian matrix differentiated with respect to time, CQT, and the product cq times q dot differentiated with respect to the generalized coordinates which is written as cq times q dot q. Let's start with the vector ctd. This is very straightforward. If you remember, the vector ct was in terms of one constant, that is. Hence, our vector ctt will be a zero vector. Now let's differentiate the Jacobian matrix with respect to time. However, in our example, the Jacobian matrix does not depend on time. Take a look. This means that our result will be a null 9 by 9 matrix, rendering the product 2 times CQT times Q dot a null vector. Our final term is the product CQ times Q dot differentiated with respect to the generalized coordinates. The first thing we need to do is to get the resulting vector from the product cq times q dot. Let's do it. Differentiating with respect to the generalized coordinates, we get another 9 by 9 matrix. Multiplying this matrix with the vector of generalized velocities, we finally find the term we were looking for. Just to remind ourselves, let's bring the acceleration formula for the kinematic analysis. Okay, having it as a guide, we can now substitute all the non null terms. It was a long exercise, wasn't it? However, if you break it down, you'll see that these types of problems follow the same procedure consistently. First, you derive the vector of constraints, then you start differentiating and operating with the terms according to the expressions for position, velocity, and acceleration. I hope you notice here how important the correct formulation of the vector of constraints is. Almost all the terms needed to perform the analysis were derived from this vector. Thanks for watching and see you soon.